lose the safety net and leave your helmets behind. We're about to enter the death-defying world of daredevils. They'll come right to the edge of death and pull themselves back. I mean, that is really living. One of the hallmarks of daredevils is their desire to push limits, to go further, faster. We're ranking the top 10 people who've risked their lives chasing the ultimate thrill. She was a badass. I mean, this is a woman that looked like your all-American, sweetest pie, but no, she was not. He was a guy who was willing to sustain dozens and dozens of broken bones. Our panel of 100 experts relied on a playbook of stats, innovation, and legacy to rank them. I think the word daredevil was literally coined for him. Among gods, he was a god. He took terrifying risks. These daredevils are truly remarkable. There's a showmanship that he possessed, an understanding of how to mesmerize people. But only one can be king. I mean, if that's not a daredevil, what is? So let's start competing. Chuck Yeager rose above everyone else at that time to become the greatest test pilot of all time. Chuck Yeager is very different from a lot of the other people that we're talking about because the things he did had a purpose. I mean, he flew rockets. I mean, these things were bombs. It's kind of incredible to me that this list of daredevils includes someone august like Chuck Yeager and then someone like Johnny Knoxville, who threw objects at his nether regions to see how badly it would hurt. Those two dudes are both considered historically greatest of all time daredevils. What? He didn't do it for the entertainment or he didn't care who watched it, man. He did it for his country and he wanted to change the world forever and he did. Before he breaks his first record, Jaeger is a fighter pilot and a hero in World War II. When you think of Chuck Jaeger, words like honor and valor come to mind. He's flying into war zones. Like, he's unbelievable. Like, the things he did are unbelievable. His World War II, becoming an ace in one day, getting shot down, getting captured, getting, escaping, then going back and going, I want back in. Among his most astonishing feats, breaking the sound barrier for the very first time with broken ribs. He broke his ribs riding a horse, and he had to pretend he wasn't hurt. He was so injured that he couldn't actually close the canopy of the basic rocket. No one has done this before in human history. People are very worried about the G-forces they're gonna be subjected to crossing the sound barrier. And he's got two broken ribs that's already compromising his rib cage. It's gonna be further compressed by the force of gravity. Now, folks watching at home, I would advise against this, okay? Please seek medical attention if you break a rib before you fly in a rocket. Believe it or not, when Jaeger broke the sound barrier on October 14th, 1947, it's kept from the public for eight months. Jaeger is so amazing, it's top secret. I see him more as a scientific daredevil, one that was much needed. If we don't know how to improve unless we push something to the limit. There's a famous aviation saying, which is, there are old pilots and there are bold pilots. There are no old, bold pilots. Talk to Chuck Yeager. He was the boldest pilot that ever lived, and he died old. So he was so special. He is a legend magician, but he was really pushing the safety and the risk. He definitely have to have Houdini there. Man, de definitely, that, that's my guy. I don't think there was much real danger in what he did. I think that he was much more about the illusion. I wouldn't consider him a daredevil. Yeah, he was a daredevil. The stuff he did was incredibly dangerous. There's a lot of skeptics out there who think Houdini's stunts are just magic, true or false. He's so good that it looks like it must be unreal. It looks like it must be magic. But so much of what he was doing, he was actually doing. 
Harry Houdini, his specialty was handcuffs. And in fact, he was known as the king of handcuffs. He said he could break out of any kind of handcuffs and a company spent half a decade making a pair of handcuffs that they swore no one can break out of. They gave them to Harry Houdini, who escaped them within an hour. But there are imitators starting to pop up. And in 1908, Houdini decides no more handcuffs. It's time to take this act to a higher level. He started getting locked up in straight jackets and hanging upside down three, four, five stories off of buildings and cities all around the world. Hundreds of thousands of people would come out to watch Houdini do this escape. He really landed on a true crowd pleaser in something that the word of which spread like wildfire, which was the Chinese water torture cell. Essentially, it was a clear tank that was bolted. It would get filled full of water, and he would get locked into these metal stalks by his ankles, raised high above the stage, and then lowered upside down into this tank of water. And he would have to escape his chains, escape his bondage, and escape this tank, well, without dying. And uh, the, the not dying part's super important. He knew how to use his mind and his body and contour them in a way to have people be left with a sense of awe and wonder. It looks crazy, like it looks a whoa, but when you learn how it's done, you're like, okay, that's magic. Houdini was a great innovator because he transformed magic. He brought it to the masses. When he did these great outdoor escapes, he brought it to a higher level. Houdini's different than Chuck Yeager and Felix Baumgartner. There's a showmanship that he possessed, an understanding of how to bring a crowd together, how to mesmerize people. Houdini performs his final stunt on August 5th, 1926, escaping from a sealed casket after being submerged in a New York swimming pool. He dies three months later, not from a failed escape, but from all things, appendicitis. If this was the goat of magicians, Houdini's on that list, for sure. But yeah, and I wouldn't even put him in the top 10 of, of daredevils. Houdini was not only a great daredevil, he was a great showman, he was a great presenter, he was a great marketer. He knew how to grab his audience, get them to love him, and care whether he succeeded or not. We're ready for the Daredevil grand finale, and it's been quite the adventure getting here. We've seen some amazing stunts, from Mr. Free Solo to a man on a wire. but I'm pretty sure most of you will side with our experts on who flies in on the number one spot. Without question, Evil Knievel deserves the number one spot on this list. I think that when you say Daredevil, he's who comes to mind. I think the word Daredevil was coined for him. If you looked up Daredevil in a dictionary, it would be his photograph jumping over stuff and crashing. Evil had the flair and the costumes and, and the bravado to jump. And even if he didn't succeed, it was like, wow, man, how, how could he do that? <laughs> Evil Knievel's a joke. Evil Knievel's like, I'm just going to get on the motorcycle, hit the throttle, and see what happens. He's not measuring things. He's not, like, doing angles of attack. You know someone is like the goat when anyone else comes up and they compare you to them. Everyone gets compared to him to this day. That's how big of a mark Evil Knievel left on the world. Evil Knievel comes along at a time when ABC's Wide World of Sports, CBS's Sports Spectacular, and NBC's Sports World are looking for things outside baseball, football, basketball, hockey, boxing. They're looking for unconventional stuff. And this stuff was a spectacle. Whenever I was a kid, there weren't very many shows on TV for kids. So like whenever Evil Knievel was gonna do a jump, you looked forward to it and then that was the talk on the playground. And he was a guy who was willing to sustain 
dozens and dozens of broken bones by flying over, you know, 15 cars. For a person to hold the Guinness Book of World Records for having over 430 broken bones, and the person continue doing what they were doing is, is remarkable on a level that's hard to even comprehend. He was crazy for another reason. The bike he was using was so heavy compared to today's bikes. It was just amazing how he got a Harley flying through the air. They were tanks back then. And he did it wearing a cape. Man, he was like Superman, flying through the air. And sometimes he made it, and sometimes he took a nasty spill, and his body was seemingly broken in a zillion places. Arguably, Evil Knievel's most famous stunt occurs when he jumps 141 feet over the fountain at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. It does not go as planned. Knievel fractures multiple bones and crushes his pelvis and femur. Talk about a rough night in Vegas. But after the crash is televised, Knievel's fame goes to a whole new level. People love watching people get destroyed. They love it. They love watching people crash and get hurt. When you see him just ragdolling across the asphalt, it's shocking. Like, it's shocking. But he kept coming back for more. And he was telegenic and kind of played the role pretty well. He had sort of a Clint Eastwood thing about him. He was shattered in comas, broken bones, surgeries. They put him back together again, and he comes back and does it again. And then kind of the thing fizzled after the uh, Snake River Canyon jump, which they sold as a pay-per-view uh, theater thing. All I can tell you is when it comes time, I'm going to get in it, and I'm going to let them uh, blast me, and I hope that everybody there will blow like hell behind me. On September 8, 1974, Evil Knievel attempts to jump the mile-wide gorge of Snake River Canyon in Twin Falls, Idaho, on a rocket motorcycle. He doesn't get across, and he goes down, and they don't know where he is. And so the assumption is, well, he's somewhere at the bottom of the canyon dead. But somehow he landed on some ledge, and he was OK. That was so deflating, I think, to the audience. They wanted him either to make it across or to die trying. And instead, they got nothing. That was kind of the end for him. I mean, Evil Knievel was the quintessential daredevil, straight up. I mean, there's no question that when you use that word, the first person that will pop into your head is Evil Knievel.